Hello there. Nice to meet you. My name is Rob Reinhold with Maverick Trading. And Maverick Trading, we are the largest prop trading firm in the United States of America. We've been doing this since 1997. So let's jump on into our levered ETF series. And in this session, we're going to be talking about the SPXL, 3X Long SPY ETF. Before we jump into the levered ETF, we need to just talk about ETFs, because if you don't know what an ETF is, none of this is going to make any sense. So let's give a quick definition of what is an ETF. Whenever you hear the term the stock market, that really doesn't mean anything. Look, there's several different exchanges where stocks are bought and sold on a daily basis and they go up and down. There's really no way to say, hey, how are all the stocks doing? And so they created these things called indexes that you could actually track what the market was doing, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Standard & Poor's 500, the Russell 2000. And they created these as a way for someone to look at this number and say, oh, the market went up today, the market went down today, but it was just a collection of those 500 stocks that they put in there. In 1993, a firm called State Street created the first exchange traded fund called the SPY, or as was called the Spiders. This was developed to deliver the same return as the S&P 500 index. The great thing about these is it was a stock. It wasn't a mutual fund. It wasn't indexed. It could be directly bought and sold like a stock at any time at a really cheap price. This was a great alternative to mutual funds. Before ETFs, if you wanted to get the same return as the market, you had to pay a company probably somewhere around a half or 1% to run the money to try to get you the same return. Now it's as easy as just buying SPY. And these have options, which is awesome. We're an options trading firm at Maverick, so we absolutely love options on these ETFs. Here is the SPY symbol. So this is the spiders. And this is the ETF that is made to track the movement of the S&P 500. So the way that these work is that the company that runs this, they will actually go out and buy actual shares of all 500 stocks is when the market moves, they buy some, they sell some, they're always moving in and out of these positions. So let's say that someone didn't wanna trade the SPY, they wanted to trade something a little bit different. We need to get a ticker symbol for that. So let's say there's a trader out there that says, okay, I wanna trade the SPY, but I want to get some leverage on it. I actually wanna get times three. So they take out their multiplier, times it by three, and that's going to give them the ticker symbol SPXL. This is the Direxion 3X bullish SPY ETF. So Direxion is the company that runs this specific ETF. Now what they're trying to do is they're trying to get this stock symbol, SPXL, to follow the S&P times three. Now they don't go out and buy shares, they buy derivatives. They do stock options and futures. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get as close to a 3X return as they possibly can. Let's take a look at the SPY versus the SPXL. On the left is the SPY. On the right is the SPXL. Now again, remember the SPXL is trying to deliver 3X the return of the SPY. And let's just see how they move together. And you can see here, they really move in lockstep together. The same movement that's happening on the left is happening to the right. Now look, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be really, really close. So the SPXL is the three times long SPY ETF. Now look, there is another ETF out there. I just wanted to stop right here and say that there are two 3x long ETFs for the SPY. There's the SPXL and there's the UPRO or the UPRO. They're designed the same way. It's just two separate companies competing against each other to see who can get the lion's share of the volume. So let's take a look at which one is actually better. Let's take a look at the SPXL on the left and the UPRO on the right. And let's see how well they compare when we trade them side by side. As you can see, they pretty much do the exact same thing. But the big question is when you're looking to trade, which one of these do I trade? Do I trade SPXL or do I trade UPRO? Which one is better? Well, the way to actually answer that question is to look at its returns and see which one was actually better. 
So right here, I've got the monthly returns for the SPXL. And you can see that we've got our monthly returns over here on the right. And you say, okay, well, that's what the SPXL returned. What about the UPRO? So you can see here, when you take a look at this month to month, it's actually pretty similar. This first month, negative 15.76 or negative 15.79. That is 0.03%. That's very, very close. But the question is, which one is better? And so what we need to do is look at the differentials over time. And you can actually see that the UPRO was actually slightly better. Over 12 months of time, it returned you an extra 0.01%. So yes, if someone asks the question, which one is better? Technically speaking, at least in this example here over this one year period, it was the UPRO. In all reality, this doesn't matter whatsoever. You can trade either one and be just fine. Let's get into how to use the SPXL. Now we really like these 3X levered ETFs as great short-term trading vehicles. Now what we mean by short-term is a day trade or a swing trade, something that lasts maybe two to 10 days. Once you get past that point, they're no longer all that great. So let's just take a look at a trade based on the stock itself, where you just go in and you buy the stock and you sell it. Just a normal equity stock trade. Let's jump into the SPXL and make a trade. Now look, we can make a, a longer term trade, a swing trade, a day trade. Let's go ahead and just do a uh, intermediate term swing trade. So something that's gonna last for two to 10 days. So I'm here on a four hour chart and this is on TradingView software and I'm going to be using what's called the bar replay feature. The bar replay feature is really cool. You basically can go back at any period of time and start from there and actually Make, make a simulated trade. So I'm just gonna, what I like to do is I like to go back in time, I like to scroll and just pick a random date. So here we have a random date on a four hour chart and we're gonna look to potentially trade this here. So with the bar replay, you've got this little bar here and you say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and play it. So remember, this is the three time SPY long. So again, there's no reason to short this. If we wanted to short it, we would do the short ETF and just go long. There's no advantage to it whatsoever. So we're only looking to be long this ETF. And we wanna be long this ETF in a good time. Like where is a good time to be long this ETF? Now Maverick, we're big believers in trend following. And so trend is just the most important thing. And right now you can see both the 20 and the 50 day moving averages are flat. It's saying, hey, there's no trend right now. Don't even look at trading this. Now, once those start to steepen to go higher, then we're very interested. But until that point, not interested. Let's see if we can get steepening of those trends. Okay. We now have a steepening of the trend. We've got a breakout. Everything we want to see. Okay. Now we can look at making a potential trade on this, but we're not going to chase it up here. We're going to wait for a pullback or a base. Let's see if we get one of those. Again, the market doesn't have to do anything we think it is, but we were getting a base. It's a very nice base, and it's actually looking like what we call at Maverick, a high and tight base, where we had a very strong move. And then take a look at this. Over the next five candles, that's 20 hours, people are refusing to sell. Now, look, people are just saying, hey, I don't want to buy it here, but no one is turning into sellers. This is a very, very strong pattern. So for us, we're like, okay, we like this setup. Um, let's call it $92 on a breakout. So we can go out and actually place our order out there. We can say, you know what? We want to use a buy stop at $40. And you can put that order out there and it will just be sitting there waiting. If, sorry, not $40. $92. That's much better. Okay, so our buy stop is at 92 if it doesn't break out and run, we never got into the trade. Using these buy stop orders really helps you stay out of some of the trades that never even triggered. Let's see if it triggers. All right, so you can see here, it triggers and every trade needs a order to control risk. Now we're using just stock here. So what we can use here very simply is a stop loss order. 
And for me, I know the stop loss order would be actually down here below the low of the base. So that is 9080. So we will put in our sell stop order at 9080. Okay, so again, this, this point, the trade is in, the trade's looking good. Now we need to use position management to get out of it. We don't just decide when to get out of it. This stock will decide and tell us when to get out of it. Now I got into it because the moving averages were steepening. It was above the moving averages and was breaking out. I want to stay in this position until those are over. Once those are over, I want out. Now for me right now, 90, 80 is my stop but I love to use a 20 period moving average. So I'm going to be using this 20 period moving average, this red line as my trailing stop. As long as it stays above that, I'm in. As soon as it drops below the 20 period moving average, I'm out. And you can see here, that was the exit. We don't decide when to exit, the stock does. And we got out right around $95. So sold $95. That's a pretty decent little swing trade there. That's about 3.2% over probably about three to four days is what this ended up making. Yeah, maybe five or six days is what this ended up being. You can use these levered ETFs for short-term trading. They're fantastic vehicles. As you can see, the ETFs are great trading vehicles, but here's the problem. They have risks and we need to talk about the risks and what happens. So let's take a look at the return differential. And this is the biggest problem with these 3X ETFs. Remember I said earlier that Direxion was attempting to get three times the return of the SPY. Sometimes they miss badly. And here was a great example of in 2020, the SPY returned 18.4%. The three times long levered SPXL returned 9.7%. That is a huge miss. So if you take a look at the returns of the SPY on the left and the SPXL on the right, and we compare them, you can see that there's some dramatic underperformance. So again, you lost 45 basis points in 2020 towards it. Again, Direction just didn't get it right. 2011 was 20%. As you can see, there was four years out of 12 here where they did a little bit better. Eight years, not as good. If you hold these for long, you get absolutely crushed. Now also, take a look at when you do take losses. These losses are really quite catastrophic. So the differentials make these not great for any sort of long-term holding. These levered ETFs are also going to be more expensive. So the SPY, the annual fee on that is 0.09%. The SPXL, 0.95%. So you're going to pay more fees. Every time you buy and sell these, you're going to be paying a fee to the ETF company. And sadly, there's really no options benefit. So let's talk about this. The options market knows that these symbols are three times more volatile than the underlying symbol. So those options are simply going to be three times as expensive. It gets adjusted to where there's really no benefit and all of a sudden, there's not only no benefit, but there are some real negatives here. Much wider bid-ass spreads, much more slippage. It's just not as good. So let's talk about options trading on these levered ETFs. Maverick is a options trading firm. We love options. We specialize in options. And we love ETFs with options. The problem is the levered ETFs give you no benefit and only downside. So all options trading should be done on the 1x long ETF, the SPY. If you want to be long the S&P, buy some calls, do a call spread, whatever it is on the SPY. If you want to be short the SPY, well, you could pick the 3x short ETF, but don't do options on that. Do options, do put options on the SPY. There's no benefit at all to trading options on these levered ETFs. And really, there are just more fees to them and more costs. And last, let's take a look at using them in hedging. And this is just a fantastic way to use these levered ETFs. Probably the best way for the average person to utilize these is just as a hedge. It's when you have some stocks in a portfolio and let's say maybe the market's going down or up, you can simply buy and sell these to hedge out that exposure. 
So let's take a look at an example of how someone would use an XPXL to hedge out a short position. So let's say there's somebody that has 60,000 short of S&P like stocks. So they've made a bet that the market's going to go down and they take a look at the market and say, okay, it looks like it, there's gonna be a short term rally. I don't wanna get out of my position, but I don't wanna sit through this rally and feel the pain. And so what they're going to do is they're going to simply do a hedge. They'll go out on the other side and buy 20,000 of the SPXL long. At this point, they're hedged. And so if, they're, uh, if the market goes up, let's say the market goes up 10%, that's gonna hurt on their short stocks and maybe to the tune of $6,000. However, if they bought 20,000 of the XPXL, that's going to go up three times the amount and probably make about $6,000. As you can see, this trader's pretty much hedged out their exposure and has little to no risk. And let's talk about the number one risk of these levered ETFs. It's not about the ETF itself, it's about the trader. They buy too much of it. These move, really move and they have huge movements. And some of these can go down 30, 40, 50, 60%. The three X inverse ones, they've been going down 95, 96% when there's big moves. They are absolutely devastating if you have too much of these in your portfolio. So as long as you're using proper position sizing, they're just another symbol, they're just another trade. But what people do is they don't understand the risks they're taking. They say, oh, I'm just gonna get into this for a little bit of time. And the market moves 20, 30%. And if they had their entire portfolio in that, they're wiped out, they're done. One, one thing happened and they're done. If you're going to trade these, treat them respectfully and make sure you understand that these need to be properly position sized. So to wrap this up, let's talk about trading SPXL. We love it for just an intraday or a swing trade. Options trading, don't do options on this. Do all of your options on SPY and hedging. This is a great way to hedge out a short S&P like portfolio. Thanks for joining me. Take care.